participating in tonight's forum. This is the third of our three little mini forums. Thank you to our candidates. My name is Kathy Campbell. We had planned to have a moderator from the Northampton League for this evening, but she woke up sick this morning, so I'm going to take over. I am a member of the Amherst League, but I do not live in Amherst, so I won't be voting in this election. And so I hope you will accept me as an unbiased alternative. Um, tonight, we're going to hear from the candidates. We are hearing from the candidates for the new Amherst Town Council. As you know, there are 26 of these, and in order to hear from all of them in the space of three hours, we've organized these forums differently than our usual forums. All the candidates have been given three open-ended questions in advance. They're based on questions that we received from members of the community during our August forums. There won't be any opening statements, but each candidate will have an opportunity to make a short closing statement at the end. Uh, we have uh, a timer on here that's down here on the table that's visible to the candidates. And I have a version up here that has three little buttons on it that you can see. Um, we thank the town of Amherst for making this timer available to us. Uh, for the 90 second questions answers, the yellow light is going to come on at 30 seconds, when you have 30 seconds remaining. Um, we all, I also want to thank the Amherst schools for making this facility available to us and Amherst Media, which is recording the event for rebroadcast during the next two weeks in the run up to the election on November 6th. Um, candidates will need to wrap up very quickly when the red light starts blinking at the, at, at the end of their time. And if necessary, I will interrupt you. We ask that the audience silence their cell phones and remain quiet until the end of the last closing statement. So now we have going to hear from the candidates from districts four and five. They are seated to me, starting with district four, David Refson, Evan Ross, Jacqueline Maidana, and Stephen Schreiber. And from district five, the candidates are Darcy Dumont, Paul Babrowski, uh, I guess we got a little Samuel uh, McLeod and Shalini Balmil. The first question um, is going to be the, as follows. The shift to a town council manager form of local government is a big change for Amherst. What is one of your biggest concerns about the role of town council in this change and what will you do to address that concern? We'll start with the candidates from District 4, and we'll start with Steve, please. Lucky me. <laughs> so first and foremost, we need to make sure that the council is focusing on the right problems. So we need to set priorities. We've heard a number of campaign promises that range from parking meters to climate change. And so really, that's an ominous task for the, the council to weigh through those and to really figure out what the highest priorities are. Secondly, we need to make sure that the council is focusing on the right job. So we are moving into a system. So when we had town meeting, select board form of government, there was some intermingling of the executive branch and the legislative branch, where basically the select board was both, the town manager was both, and the finance committee and others were both. So now we have a complete separation of the legislative and executive branches. So we need to make sure that the town council is willing and able to serve as the legislature and really let the executive branch do its job. The council needs to move quickly on some issues. We're inheriting things like two crumbling elementary schools. Um, some, an impasse, it sounds like, on what to do with downtown, which was largely developed as a 1950s automobile-focused one-story strip malls and really competing priorities for what that should be. So the town council needs to take leadership on that, but we need to take that leadership quickly. Thank you. Jacqueline. Uh, the new 
form of government will have enormous powers and will bring new challenges. Um, because I'm concerned that the town council will be slanted in one direction, I want to work to bridge that divide. We are a diverse community, and I believe that all citizens deserve to be heard. I intend to meet more than twice a year, and that's what the charter had recommended, but I think that it's important that we meet more frequently with our community and our constituents, and I also plan on attending the other district meetings, and um, there'll be weekly meetings, I believe, and town hall, bulletin boards, and, um, and perhaps even something in the newspaper that we could have a column in the newspaper t informing our citizens about what's going on in town. We will have uh, this opportunity to uh, hear what people have to say and learn about their concerns. We will need to work together, genuinely listening to many perspectives, compromise with needed, when needed, and come to informed decisions. This will be an exciting opportunity to develop better communication among people of all ages and persuasions with new methods of keeping the public informed of our government activities. Thank you. Evan? Okay. Uh, so, can you all hear me? One of the things that's important to me is making sure that town council is uh, not just responsive, but also representative of the communities that it serves. Uh, Amherst has a number of diverse communities, from students to seniors, uh, renters, homeowners, young families, uh, people of color, immigrants. And we need to make sure that everyone feels like they are being represented uh, on town council. And so throughout the campaign, I, I've heard a lot of people say things like, I want to elevate the voices of the LGBTQ community, or I want to elevate the voices of people of color. Uh, well, if you want to elevate their voices, elect them, right? Put them in government. Uh, and so I'm happy to see that we have a somewhat diverse pool of candidates. I'm happy to see that we have a student running. Uh, I'm happy to see that we have a working mom of a school-aged child running. I'm happy to see that we have immigrants running. Uh, and I think the first step is to elect them, but then we have to do more. And that's where the community participation officer plays a role. Uh, this is a position that was designed to help engage underrepresented groups in our government. Uh, and I think at first, it, it likely will not be a full-time position. The money just isn't there. Uh, but I think over the long term, our goal should be to make that a full-time position, to make that a position that has the resources uh, to, to accomplish that goal, to make sure that no matter who you are in Amherst, you feel like you are being represented on council. Uh, that's one of the reasons I decided to run as a millennial, as a renter, as a member of the LGBTQ community. Uh, I wanted to make sure those communities had a seat at the table, uh, and I think that the council needs to work to make sure that every community has a seat Thank at you. the table. Thank you. David. Uh, first, thank you to the League for holding this forum. Did I press a button here that shouldn't have been put? You're fine. I'm okay? Thank you. My main concern is how well counselors will listen to all sides of an issue with an open mind and a willingness to compromise. Unlike other opponents in District 4, I have not pledged any group or PAC to vote in a certain way. How can a candidate promise a vote when we don't have all the information that's needed? Counselors must be flexible thinkers who carefully study issues and show respect to each other. Another important concern is how the council establishes procedures for choosing members of three critical communities, the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and the Finance Committee. In the past, residents have only had to complete a citizen's activation form. We need a more detailed process, including interviews. Committees need to have members with a variety of experience and points of view. We also want dedicated volunteers to represent a diversity of residents, and we must develop ways to make that possible. I have served as a case manager with the Hampshire County Sheriff's Department for many years, and in that capacity, nothing, and I truly mean nothing, phases me anymore. My common sense and respectful approach would be a strong asset to the council. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Moving on to District 5, Shalini. So I'll be sharing what um, many others have shared on this uh, forum. 
Um, and it also echoes the voices of the people I've been speaking with. So having spoken with over 400 people, what a common concern I've heard is, will the 13-member council be representative of the diverse voices and the perspectives? So I'd like to approach this um, concern by focusing on three specific areas. One, diversity, two, communication um, channels, and three, building trust. So in terms of diversity, I think people have already uh, mentioned we're looking at not just uh, people of color or immigrant families, uh, different income groups, uh, but students, um, senior citizens, businesses, different stakeholders, um, and also just making sure that different perspectives are being heard. What I want to emphasize here is also inclusion and equity. As um, the edu educator, Verna Meyer, says, diversity is being asked to the party, and inclusion is being asked to dance. So just making sure that we are doing that and creating equal opportunities for everyone to participate. The second thing I want to emphasize is setting up some systems of communication, online and offline. and. Um, making sure that we have multiple avenues for people to speak with us. And the last is building trust, which in means creating policies so everyone okay. feels safe Thank you. to Thank speak you. up and be heard. Thank you. Let's go on to uh, Sam, please. Samuel. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Uh, one of the concerns that I have for the new council is that we have a smooth and smooth process of transition and that we continue to offer high quality services to our town. I want to ensure extensive resident input and transparent government. I want us to reach out to our residents all the way from South Point to Amherst Woods in District 5. I think it's crucial that we understand that our role as a council is a representative leadership role and an oversight role. We need to set up processes to make sure that all of our residents have a voice. I have an MBA and have been working in the field of management effectiveness and human resources for the last 19 years. Organizations come to us seeking solutions. I have an in-depth understanding of workplace processes and effective processes. <clears throat> we need to define the vision, policy, and set goals as we move to best practices. We need and we must empower our town manager and our dedicated employees to do the tasks that we set for, forth for them to do. I want to avoid any semblance of micromanagement of our employees because we need to set the broad objectives and the goals that they can achieve. This is going to be a major transition for our town and it needs to go smoothly for all of us. We need to work together, we need to understand our roles, we need to have clear procedures and maintain open lines of communications, and I'll see to it that that occurs. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you to the League. Um, my concern, my biggest concern about the new council is the fact that there are, there's a serious division in the town, uh, largely around the schools, but somewhat also about the charter. And I think the council plays a role in either uh, enhancing that divide or fixing it. And um, I hope that the council can heal that division. And part of that is how we set things up. Um, I act as special counsel to towns in Western Massachusetts on zoning and regulatory work. And I can tell you that um, I also teach seminars for the Citizen Planning Training Collaborative. And a lot of those seminars are about how to have meetings, how to have transparent, fair, uh, and equitable meetings, both in terms of substance and in terms of appearance. Um, and I think both are important when the council gets started. So I think I can bring those skills to the council. And the best I can say about trying to heal the divisions is that I will reach across the table to anybody that I don't agree with. And I think the key word here is compromise. Um, because politics is messy, democracy is messy, and what that really means is that no one gets what they want exactly. Compromise is the word for the day, and I will follow that. Thank you. Thank you. Darcy. My greatest concern is making sure that all members of our community have access to the council, that our actions as a council are transparent, 
and that we're responsive and accountable to all parts of our diverse town. This is key because we'll only have 13 members of our new legislature representing 40,000 people. I'm going to work actively to recruit a pool of volunteers diverse in race, class, gender, age, and viewpoint, including parents and guardians of school children for participation on our boards and committees. I'll call, I'll call for sending out a mailer to all town residents in Spanish and English and advertising on social media, inviting parents to apply uh, for the positions. The people we need to hear from are not necessarily the ones who'll come forward, so we'll have to seek them out. Frequent open roundtable dialogue sessions must also be implemented between the council and the public and also with boards and committees. I'll hold regular office hours and monthly constituent meetings in District 5. Uh, we'll hold listening sessions for groups with special concerns, meetings in the common rooms of the apartment complexes, and I'll participate in District 5 events and provide a rapid response to constituent questions and concerns. Thank you. For our second question, um, there has been a lot of discussion of development in the central downtown Amherst, but for this question, we're asking you to consider areas that are not contiguous to downtown. Specifically, what options do you see for commercial development and affordable housing in your district? And what concerns do you have about these options? We'll start with District 5, and um, Sam, could you start out for us, please? Uh, we have a lot of opportunities in District 5 for commercial development and affordable housing. We have some of the, the majority of a uh, larger group of affordable housing in our district and in other districts already. Uh, Atkins Corner and West Pomeroy intersections, village centers are the primary locations. Uh, we need to understand that commercial development is driven by entrepreneurs and businesses, and our task is to set the field and make it inviting for people to want to invest. <clears throat> Multi-use buildings with designs that accommodate resident concerns, changes from some of the issues that happen downtown. Form-based zoning will assist in this area. Uh, I want us to enforce inclusionary zoning with affordable and workforce housing. Uh, we can have first floor re retail shops, coffee shop, merchants, retails, there's a lot to do. Um, District-based events that'll support our businesses. We can have partnerships with the local colleges in Hampshire College where some of the students will set up events and they'll hold them downtown. Uh, some of the actions that we can take as a council is to expedite the installation of appropriate sidewalks and crosswalks at Atkins Corner, West Pomeroy Village Centers and intersections. We need to prioritize our inspection services for commercial requests, expedite the process so that our businesses don't lose time when they're investing. It's a critical factor to encourage development. Uh, we need to market Amherst as a business-friendly and sustainable community. It starts at the top. Okay. I'm sorry, you're out of time. You need to. Continue with Shalini, please. Um, so one of the viable options that I want to share today, and having spoken with um, many community uh, neighbors around there and professionals, is the creation of an Atkins Cultural Trail District. And what that means is we could create a cultural district that has trails and sidewalks, uh, bike paths, crosswalks between the different points of interest in the Atkins Corner. We already have amazing institutions there, like the Eric Carl Museum, Yiddish Bookstore, Hitchcock Center, Hampshire College, Applewood, the Arboretum, um, there's the Atkins Market. And so if you could create a very lively cultural district, and there's a lot of funding that's available for facilitating these cultural districts, uh, such as from the Mass Cultural Council, uh, the State Recreational Tra Trails Program. And what this would, might look like is encouraging uh, our tourists, our neighbors, employees, to walk along the trails experiencing art, colorful signage, pop-up performances, uh, historic storytelling to really build a sense of place. And uh, down the road, a future idea could be to invite development that's mixed-use, mixed-income in that 
area that's not yet developed, we can build a model of what a resilient community looks like with maybe uh, housing that has shared community gardens. Uh, we, have make, uh, we have the kind of businesses that support our art spaces mm -hmm. and um, Thank the you. cultural district. Thank you. Thank um, Darcy? Fundamentalist, I believe that development should be concentrated in downtown and the village centers and fully support thoughtfully developing our District 5 centers. It would provide both needed revenue and affordable housing to the town. As, a, as with downtown, I would want to make sure development is inviting, maintains the character of the town as a whole, has adequate parking and connections to bike paths and public transportation. I'll seek the opinions of District 5 residents about development at Atkins Corner and Pomeroy Lane. Both are places where we could develop low and moderate income housing and appropriate commercial space according to what residents want. Each proposal has its issues, has had its issues in the past. For example, traffic calming is needed at Pomeroy Lane for development to be workable and really should happen now. We need more development in order to keep our property taxes as low as possible. Amherst is in need of moderately priced housing for low and moderate income folks, like town staff, college staff and faculty, and new families. I propose encouraging moderate scale and price development, such as the Green River Commons in Greenfield, which provides net zero ready townhouses. That's the type of housing we need so moderate income folks like me can afford to live in Amherst. Thank you. And Paul? Um, we have two village centers, as was mentioned earlier. Uh, we have the Pomeroy Lane area and we have the Atkins Corner area. Both are zoned residential village center, which means that you can have some small business there and different types of housing that you would find in the outlying areas of town. Um, we also, it, at Atkins, it's business village center, which allows for a little more intensive business. Things like shops, um, tailors, attorneys, accountants, that kind of thing. Um, and both areas allow for apartments uh, by special permit, which means that inclusionary zoning for affordable housing would be part of any apartments that were built there that were permitted. The other idea that I think we're pursuing now, and it's not my idea, it's been around for a while, uh, state law was passed in 2004 for Chapter 40R. And Chapter 40R allows for an overlay zoning district, which allows for more intensive affordable housing projects. The beauty of 40R overlay districts, which we don't have yet, but I think the town is trying to identify some areas, is that um, we have control over the look and feel of the buildings, we have control over the design standards, and we get incentive money from the states. So, uh, for example, in Northampton, they have a 40R district, they got over $300,000 from the state, and that money goes into the general fund and they can spend it any way they want. Thank you. Jacqueline, will you start off for us for District 4? My district does encompass the town center, but one area that is not contiguous with my district is the University Drive. And we need to encourage landowners and the university to develop more affordable housing for students without negatively impacting the town center. In addition, I support the Amherst Municipal Housing trust recommendation uh, to sell E Street School, attracting builders who share our commitment to affordable housing. The new North Amherst development is an example of adding affordable housing along with commercial use. Uh, development must be environmentally sustainable. It must take into consideration the community and the abutters and, and how the residents feel. And I think keeping scale and sight line in mind is really, really important. This is something that has not happened in the center of town. So I think that it's really important that we 
keep an open mind about new development, but it's also important that we be very careful about keeping affordable housing up for forefront. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Steve. Thank you. So um, I think about this question all the time because I've been on the planning board for almost 10 years, and I'm an architect, and I'm the chair of the architecture department at UMass. So in fact, my students right now are looking at th this exact issue on an area that we're not supposed to talk about, which actually is in District 4, which is the area next to the old Bertucci's. So they are looking at, a, at how affordable housing and, and mixed-use development can be designed in that area in a way that isn't as confronting as perhaps what we all read in, in the newspaper over the summer. Um, I also have a series of questions that I, so rather than answering your, <laughs> the question with an answer, I have some questions that I think that the town council should be pursuing. So we are getting this start in the midst of a vital town-wide conversation about what we want and expect from development in town. How do we want our downtown and village centers to look like in 20 years? I think these are important conversations. How much development is too much development? How much do we want and need in order to diversify our tax base, serve our residents and keep our downtown bustling while also preserving the trees and green space that make Amherst such a great home? This is one of the great opportunities of town council to have these conversations in a group of 13 involving the community. Thank you. David? Thank you. Um, District 4 does include uh, downtown. I am concerned that the current planning board has given so many waivers and special permits which have created some problems. Large apartment projects marketed to students must include affordable housing, handicap units, parking, and green space, which currently they're lacking. It is an honor to build in our famous college town, and developers need to work with us for a balance between their private property rights and our needs. Zoning laws must reflect our town's priorities. We need an overall plan for smart growth with a variety of buildings, not just a few stories, stores on the first floor and student-oriented housing above. Any commercial, commercial development outside of town must be accessible to all residents by walking on maintained sidewalks, shuttle transportation, biking, and PVA bus routes. We need to attract developers willing to build affordable, small cluster housing with a combination of strategies. The E Street School is one of those buildings that could be a small cluster affordable housing unit. New and interesting commercial development could both attract residents and visitors. I know my time is short, but I'm committed to a creative arts center, and if you listen carefully to what's going on, I would invite these folks to come and serenade us when they're through over here. And this is an example of the creative arts that could be endowed in our town. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Evan. So, so one of the areas uh, that we haven't talked about yet that is in District 4 is uh, East Amherst uh, over by South Ple uh, Southeast Street and, and College Street. Uh, already there, there's a, a decent amount of commercial development. We have stores, retail, we have services, we have offices. Uh, there's also a diversity of housing in that area. You have single family homes. You also have apartment complexes like Aspen Chase. Uh, but there's also a decent amount of underutilized land in that area. If you're going down College Street, if you're at that intersection, uh, there's a lot of potential there for infill development that will allow us to increase residential and commercial space uh, without encroaching on our neighborhoods um, and, and doing so outside of Amherst Center. It's also an area where we already have a lot of uh, focused on affordable housing. We have Watson Farms there, which is an Amherst Housing Authority complex. Uh, there's also the proposal, as mentioned before, to sell the East Street School and use that to develop affordable housing. So already, we're looking at East Amherst uh, a as a place for affordable housing. Uh, what we have to make sure, of course, is any anytime, not just in East Amherst, but any time that we're increasing residential or commercial development, we're making sure we have the infrastructure to support it. So anytime that we're going to increase traffic, whether that be vehicle traffic, pedestrian tra traffic, uh, bicycle traffic, we need to make sure that we're also uh, have that 
have a corresponding investment in our sidewalks, in our roads, in building bike lanes. As someone who has biked down College Street and through that intersection, uh, it's a little harrowing. And so if we're going to encourage people to live there in a, in a walkable, bikeable community, we need to invest in the infrastructure in that area to make sure that that works. Thank you. For this last question, we're asking you to select one of your top priority goals for the new town council over, this, over its three-year term. What is that goal, and how will you translate this goal into explicit town council actions? Um, let's start with David in District 4, please. Thank you. The council needs to prioritize capital projects and develop a financial plan that taxpayers can accept. My wife and I have raised six successful graduates from Amherst Public Schools, so believe me when I say this, I know a lot about budgeting, taking out loans when necessary, and obviously paying back debt. I'm going to talk a little bit later when it comes to my uh, closing statement about other aspects of my work life that have a lot to do with this budgeting aspect. My top goals when elected will be a solution to the elementary schools, followed by a South Amherst fire station, a DPW building, and perhaps those two uh, last projects could be on one site. Other capital projects need to be examined carefully to see if they are needed or if existing town buildings can be used in new ways. Most important, the council needs to be conscientious about hearing all sides and either, either to reach consensus. The council needs to listen carefully to the details of projects proposed by the school committee, the Jones Library, the DPW Fire Station Advisory Committee. Since taxes from the new developments cannot be counted on to make a significant dent in our property taxes, we need to question the need for borrowing and overrides and live within our means. So really the question comes down to what do we want, what do we need, and most of all, what can we really afford? Thank you. Thank you. Evan? So it's hard to pick just one priority. There are a number of needs the town needs from the capital projects that David referenced to lessening the burden on our residential taxpayers who are, who are feeling that. Uh, but as a renter who has grappled with Amherst's difficult rental market, uh, affordable housing is one of my top priorities, and I think it needs to be one of the top priorities of the council. Uh, and it's a, it's a priority that affects a lot of different communities, from low and moderate income renters who are being uh, who feel like they're being forced out of town, uh, to young families who are looking for a dwindling number of starter homes, to seniors who are looking to downsize and looking for an affordable apartment, uh, to homeowners who are on High Street or North Whitney Street uh, who are worried that an LLC is going to buy that home next door and turn it into a student rental and change their, their neighborhood. Uh, so there's a lot of pieces to this. Uh, there's no silver bullet. Uh, but part of that is looking at our zoning and our permitting to unlock housing production. Part of that is pursuing form-based code, as Sam mentioned earlier, to make sure that new housing projects are, are acceptable to the character of our community. It means utilizing the tools that we have, like our inclusionary zoning bylaw or like our affordable housing property tax credit that helped create 26 affordable units in North Amherst. Um, it also means pursuing a 40R district uh, that allows developers to uh, more densely developed, but in exchange for creating affordable housing and also opens us up to some state funding. Uh, Paul mentioned the $320,000 of state money that went into Northampton for its Village Hill neighborhood in the 40R district. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars that we could invest into schools, in, into infrastructure. So Thank there's a you. lot of things there. Jacqueline. Thank you. It's clear that the new town council will be facing many complex issues prioritizing capital projects, a new master plan, and appointments and reappointments to boards and committees. One major concern is the large dorm-like buildings in the town center. The fact that the current planning board has given so many waivers and variances without requiring affordable housing or adequate parking is a serious problem. Amherst clearly needs affordable housing. Many young families cannot afford to live in our community. S student housing in the heart of town does not provide desirable housing for individuals like seniors or young families. 
the town council will appoint new members to the finance committee, planning board, and the ZBA. It will be our job to make sure that the new members will respect Amherst's commitment to affordable housing while working to maintain our small town charm. I think this is really our job to make sure that people in this community can afford to live in this community. I've lived in Cushman Village, I've lived down by the grist mill, and now I live in the heart of town. And I'm really grateful to Amherst that I can Thank actually Thank afford you. to live here now. Thank you. Steve? So the number, my number one priority is focuses on smart growth. How do we encourage development that nurtures diversity and caters to a broad spectrum of residents and visitors? I'm proud to have been volunteered on town meeting for eight years and planning board for 10 years working on these issues. I think that we have achieved a lot in those 10 years, including basically unlocking development on these 1950 strip malls in downtown. So where there used to be weed-filled lots, there is now five stories of new residents in Amherst. 300 new beds have been added in, in downtown Amherst of people of all ages. So I'm very proud of those accomplishments that were really a great example of town meeting and planning board working together. And I'm looking forward to future collaborations like that with town council and planning board. I have particular problem solving expertise that will be useful on town council as it works with the community and planning board to update the master plan and to ensure that the master plan is a guideline for sustainable development and conservation. In particular, there should be a clearer connection between the master plan and land use regulations. I support another look at form-based zoning, which I've been working with for 30 years, and infill development in our village centers. Thank you. Darcy, will you start for District 5? Thank you. I'm, I'm proud to be the only District 5 candidate to be endorsed by the Sierra Club, and my record demonstrates that sustainability will be central to be my approach as a counselor. I want to talk now, though, about what I'm hearing from fellow residents in South Amherst. We've been talking to a lot of residents, uh, and the sense I'm getting that, uh, is that most of them have concerns about money. What the town spends it on, how much it spends, how high taxes are, how it's really hurting them. They also talk about downtown development, mostly in a critical way regarding the new buildings and share concerns regarding parking, sidewalks, style, et cetera. About downtown buildings, I plan to ask the new council to pause approvals just long enough to amend the zoning bylaw to make sure that downtown development is proceeding as residents want. And about property taxes, in addition to increasing the commercial tax base, we need to do a deep dive into the budget to find where we can save with the least impact on residents. One area ripe for savings is in energy efficiency and conservation. Our being a sustainable town will mean major cost savings over time, with both our zero energy buildings and initiating a program of community choice energy. Also, I intend to critically analyze the budget and find ways to reduce spending. We need to be able to maintain quality services while reducing the impact on residents. Thank you. Paul? I was gonna talk about the four or five capital projects, but um, I think I'll address the situation downtown. I think the situation downtown uh, comports with our master plan. It comports with smart zoning. Um, if you read the UN climate change report that came out earlier this month, we are in a severe crisis and it, we're further along in it than we thought even a year ago. And part of the conclusion of that report states that the entire world needs to learn how to live a different way. And part of that is density in living. And the buildings downtown are a good example of smart growth, um, less carbon use because people won't have to drive, they're on a transit route. It also helps our town. There are problems with those buildings, 
but it also helps our town. Those buildings will generate roughly a million dollars in revenue a year, every year. Not one year, but every year. And the people that live there will patronize the businesses downtown, and that will generate more revenue. And that'll help us with our four or five capital plans. So I support that. I also support small zoning changes for the look and feel of those projects that we don't agree with, rather than a large building moratorium, which will create dissension at the council level. And I don't think we want to start out that way. So I support that. Thank you. Sam? Uh, <clears throat> I've made it very clear since I started campaigning how I feel about the need for common sense solutions for our downtown development. Uh, the buildings that are currently there don't pass the test of my 90-year-old mom who passed away three years ago. There's not adequate sidewalk space in front of them. There's not parking, and they also lack affordable housing. Having said that, they're not inherently a bad thing. We need to adjust to hear the needs of all of our residents. I'm going to talk about a different goal, though, uh, which is I want us to adopt in our first term a complete streets and sidewalks policy to ensure future safe access and use of our primary roadways for all of our residents and transparently generate and display an updated and prioritized listing of our safety concerns by June of 2020 based on an urgency and expense. Our Transportation Advisory Committee is already working on this. We need to do the following things. We need to approve and appointed members of the Transportation Advisory Committee. We need to support this committee's advancement of complete streets policy planning. Uh, we need to appoint a council member liaison between the committee and the board, and we need to actively promote and advocate for resident input for issues that they have in their own district. This is significant for South Amherst residents. We need sidewalks and crosswalks at the Atkins Corner and at the West Street and Pomeroy Village Center intersection. <clears throat> we also have safety Thank concerns you, at South Common, Middle Street, and East Thank and Mill you. Lane. We can make this work. Shalini. So we're all coming in with different priorities that we'd like to start with. Um, mine, uh, mine personally is to uh, make decisions that lead to a resilient Amherst for all our residents and to be a strong and uh, clear voice for District 5 residents. But the question is whose priority will be a priority, which means uh, how do we d make decisions? So. I feel a first order of business as a council is to set up the new structure of governance, of, of setting up the processes of how are we going to prioritize and how are we going to make decisions. Um, I'd like to focus on assessing and shaping the council processes, our committee structures, and community engagement. So we have more than 30 committees. Uh, deciding, defining what are their job descriptions and how can they work with the community participation officer for more community engagement? How can we set up the processes for more public engagement to make sure that the public, our District 5, is informed of what we're doing in the town council, what's going on over here, and to incorporate ways for them to be heard to participate. Not just the usual people who participate, but really reaching out to people who don't have the time and figuring out what are their obstacles to participating. I'd like to take all these inputs and create a shared vision, who are we as, t as a town, and set our strategic Thank planning you. and goals accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, each candidate will now have 45 seconds for a uh, um, closing statement. The yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds left. And I'll start at that end, Shalini, you can. All right. So as you all can see, I'm an immigrant, I'm a woman of color, and I bring in many qualifications and experience that can contribute to this new town council. I have a PhD in marketing, I'm a chartered accountant, uh, I'm a small business owner, and I'm a certified mindfulness teacher from the UMass Medical School Center. But I don't want you to believe what I'm saying right now. I would like you to 
actually see what I was doing before my campaign, see my work at Downtown Mindfulness, my published research. I'd like you to see how I'm running my campaign, uh, the recycled wood signs I've used, created collaborative opportunities for the council to work together, and that's how I'd like to work for you as your town council, inclusive, collaborative, and a creative problem solver. Thank you. Sam. <coughs> We need to do everything we can to expedite a temporary bridge repair for the station road bridge that's out. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> we need to pressure the state. I've been a part of this community for 55 years. I'm one of the candidates who have children attending our schools. I am vested in this community. We need common sense solutions and somebody who is willing, with an open mind, to hear all different viewpoints and work together. We need to bring our town back together. We can do this. We need to look for win-win scenarios that respect our residents and reach out to everybody. I'm very committed to this town. Uh, I think we can have a very successful new town council, but you need to elect somebody who is independent, open-minded, and has the appropriate background and capacity to listen to everyone. I'm asking Paul. for your vote. I need your vote. Please Paul, vote for Sam McLeod. It's Paul, please. There's not much I can say in 45 seconds except please vote for me. Um, the tagline for my campaign is experience matters and I believe that, but it's really up to the voters to determine if that's, an, if that's a um, component to my campaign that they care about. I've served as special counsel to towns in Western Massachusetts on land use, on zoning, and on smart growth initiatives. And in town, I've served on the finance committee, the planning board, uh, the housing board, the Housing uh, uh, Commission, and I've served on town meeting and some lesser committees. If you want to hear about how I think, I've produced some unscripted videos on my website, paulforamers.org, um, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Darcy. Thanks to the League of Women Voters for providing this forum. I want to make Amherst a real model of sustainability, inclusion, and democracy. I have the background and skills as a lawyer, a teacher, and a grant writer to collaborate with other counselors to do that. I'm forward-looking and optimistic. I'm optimistic that we can produce a proposal for our elementary school buildings that has broad support, agree on zoning changes that preserve the character of our beautiful downtown, increase revenue, and conserve money while also redu reducing our carbon footprint and make Amherst an affordable place to live. I'm a big picture thinker. I'm creative and bold and have a history of accomplishing what I set out to do. Please vote Thank for you. me, Darcy Dumont, on November 6th. Steve. Over the years, I've built a great track record as a team player, as someone who can listen, take a large view of important issues, and take on complex problems in a careful, thoughtful, rational way. I look forward to helping establish a town council with a structure and culture that embraces multiple perspectives and where there's respect for all. I might be also the only candidate that lives and works in District 4, and I hope you come to the next Cup of Joe with Paul, which will be at my workplace, which is the John W. Over Design Building, and it's a particular honor that I just noticed that John Over is dead center there in the audience. So please come to the next Cup of Joe with Paul, which will be right after the election. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. I'm really grateful to be here tonight. I've been a town meeting member for a number of years and raised my children here in Amherst. They went to the public schools. As I mentioned before, I've lived in a number of places in town. And I, I feel that it's uh, really important to have independent voices, independent thinkers, and that's what I am as a candidate. I'm not taking any PAC money. I have no obligation to the university other than the fact that I got several degrees from UMass. I worked there for a number of years. I also have been a business owner, and, and as a psychotherapist, I was... I've learned active listening. Thank and you, Jackie. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is your time. 
<laughs> Evan. So in the four months since I started this campaign, I've worked really hard to reach the voters of District 4 and to talk to them. Uh, I've personally knocked over 700 doors, most of them more than once, uh, and had hundreds of conversations with voters. Because uh, I think it's those conversations that matter. In those conversations, I hear the concerns of the voters, uh, and it gives me a chance to talk to them about my ideas and my priorities. Uh, and so there's been a lot that's happened in this election. Uh, I, we've filled out more surveys than I think I ever imagined. I would ever fill out um, to inform the voters of where we stand. I've been proud of the endorsements I've received from the Sierra Club, from the LGBTQ Victory Fund, uh, from Run for Something. But in the end, I know it's those conversations are what matter. Uh, and, and my hope is to continue those conversations because that's the type of local responsiveness and engagement I'm hoping to bring to council. I'm Evan Ross. You can go to my Thank website, evan4amherst.com, 4 as in District 4. David. I've lived in Amherst for 34 years and intend to be here much longer, God willing. Uh, my goal is to prioritize capital projects. Um, I'm a practical person with many experiences from teaching in a tech school, serving in the sheriff's department, to planning future logistics in the international coffee market where I deal with multi-million dollar contracts continuously. Serving as a counselor comes down to character for me. Can you trust me to represent your interest? Do I have the integrity necessary to make wise, independent decisions? My supporters have answered yes, and I know that I have the perseverance and flexibility to deal with tense, complicated situations. I'm David Refson, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of our candidates. <laughs>